Okay, let's go. All right. Here We're we here. Are. It's We're happening. Here. We're here. We are on YouTube Live and not Twitch today. It's very different. We are. I just felt that I, w- I had a little time this afternoon and I was like, I would like to try to figure out YouTube Live. Is it different? Is it the same? What's that like? Because there's we already have like a built-in community on YouTube. Yes. And thus, we've started it and it's very fun. It is very fun. I mean, it's the exact same thing as Twitch. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the, the exact same, same thing as but Twitch. But there are more it? people here. There and, are. Um, because it like pops up on, if you follow us on YouTube, I guess it pops up on your feed. Get a little which notification. Is, like, Algorithm, let's go. Hello. Wow. 2022, guys. I know. It's and all manipulated. I'm, I mean, we're only in May, but I'm proud of us this year. We said we were going to expand and do more new things with the podcast and the YouTubes, and I feel like we really have. You know, as someone who has been upset all year that I feel like I haven't accomplished <laughs> anything, that is something we've accomplished. Absolutely, we have. Oh, I feel so much better we now, guys. We are weekly live performers. 2022, the year it all happened. It's true. Not... Not true. Not for me solo, but like I guess for both of us. Didn't we start this YouTube channel and pot like YouTube? In 2013. It was 2013. So in April of 2013. We're nine years in and coming up on 10. On 10. So we have to do into something. Our ten, what are we going to do for our 10th anniversary? Know. I cannot believe we've been doing this for 10 fucking years. Oh my God. And it's crazy because we're only 12. <laughs> no, we're only 12 and it's still fun. Like there was never a moment in which I was like, oh, I fucking hate this and it's a drag. It's like, no, it's fun. To hang it's only friends. gotten better. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Guys. Ah, keeps getting better. Christina, <laughs> that bad song. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to another Two Gay Mats podcast. It's Matt Steele. And it's Matt Palmer. And we are in the throes of May, ladies and gentlemen. Matt Palmer, what have you done this week? Because I truly have nothing to tell you. Wow, about okay. Myself. We're diving right in. We're well, going okay. right in. This week was week two of, um, or maybe it was, just, it was the main chunk of the week that Jackson was gone. So uh-huh. I've been living alone. Oh my week. God, are you like going insane? Because whenever I'm home by myself for a long extended period of time, I uh-huh. feel like I am like spiraling out of control into uh, madness. I-, I would say I was worse last week around this time than I okay. am this week last week I, it had just happened and I just was like oh my god do I not have friends outside of my relationship like what's happening and it was like a bit of a spiral this week I had work and work was kind of dramatic and stressful by the end of it and it but it was like more relaxing this weekend I uh, went to my friend Rory's house who's been on the podcast big mm-hmm. Mariah fan and we watched Mariah's master class on Friday together together did you like try things out on each other like like because I know there's like a video of like Mariah and Brandy, and Brandy yeah singing together with like a piece of paper being like <laughs> What if we try this? Huh? Did you and Rory do that? We didn't quite. It was more like he's a big lamb and did not have access to the masterclass. And so I was like, of course, so we have to do this. Friend. That's what friendships are yes. for, you know, watching masterclasses together. And then yes, on uh, yesterday, Saturday, there was talk of possibly going to the L.A. County Fair, which oh. I was interested in. But then um, I feel like over this past week, I've heard of a lot of people that I personally know getting COVID. Mm. And I was just like being around that many people to go to this fair that I was like interested in going in initially. But then, um, I, you know, I was going to go with my friend, Sarah, my friend Ernesto, both friends of the pod as well. And, uh, it was exciting and I was wanting to go, but then I'd hear about all these COVID cases that I knew people that were getting it. And I was like, I don't know. And then there was a moment where they were like, well, also lady a is playing at the, uh, at the fair. Maybe we should all go. And I was like, you know, I think that's my sign. <laughs> That's the sign for me to bow out. And it's like, I love them very much. And I was wanting to meet a new person in Ernesto's life. I was, I, I, there were many reasons I wanted to go, but I was like, I could just stay home. I could work on this music stuff that I said I was going to do while Jackson wasn't in town that I have not done. And so that's what I did. Fair. You can have the corn dogs next year. Exactly. You know? When things hopefully are calmed down. Because yes. we're going to Palm Springs soon. Exactly. And if I got sick mm-hmm. and couldn't go to Palm Springs after I paid so much fucking money, yes. I would literally, like my head if, would spin around. If you got COVID before your Palm Springs trip for all of us yes. that you like organized, yes. would we all just go to Palm Springs? You would. I would make you go. Like I would, that would make be it was, so funny. It would be hilarious. I think we're celebrating Matt's birthday months late and also without him. <laughs> it would be amazing. So we're not having that happen. Okay. So I was kind of a spinster at home. And then today, uh, our friend Corey came over and we had a brunch and caught up. I hadn't seen him in a minute. He had been out of town for a long time. And we played a lot of Switch video games. And also, of course, I've been playing Ocarina of Time. Of course, lot. Ocarina. Ocarina. <laughs> So that Zelda N64 game is still getting a lot of play over here. But Matt Steele, yes. how was your week been? You know, it was lovely. I really cannot say I did much. I um, I don't know. The most exciting, well, no, something exciting happened.
happened that What's we'll it? talk about later, but like I can't really talk about it. Okay. Um, in like full detail, but like we'll talk can about you talk it later. about it to me off of mic? I okay, can, darling. I to make yes. sure. Uh, you are in all the inside scoop. Yes. Um, but uh, I guess an exciting thing I did was uh, it, on Monday I taught my coworkers what twink means. <laughs> And um, so now all of my straight coworkers, because you know, whenever you talk to your straight friends and mm-hmm. they're always like, wait, wait, wait. So like if someone's a bear, like what am I? Like, am I a bear? They love am that. I, They love the animal game with yes. the gay slang and everything. And like, and it's all they want to talk about when you like, when they like bring it up to you and they, you educate them about whatever. I think this is also um, specifically, you work with a lot of young people. So like you have young people. No, it's straight. old people too. Old people, old More, straight people? Like old, I would say like 35 and under. Really? Oh yeah. I didn't um, know that was still happening. Oh yeah. And they're still very excited to talk about and everything so I you know I had to I like told all of my male coworkers that were, are under the age of 26 and hairless I'm like well you're a twink <laughs> And w- they were so offended by the term. Wait, why were they offended? They, because they're just like, oh, it doesn't sound like a tough thing. And I'm like, no, 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 no. People love twinks. Like when you, and <laughs> and they're always like, it just sounds like the bottom of the totem pole in the hierarchy. And I'm mm. like, no, 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 no. It's there is no hierarchy like of groups. There's hierarchy within the group, but like <laughs> there is no like, oh, one group is better than other. It's all like what you like and everything. Right. And they couldn't wrap their heads around it. And so I and then I had to teach them like what twunk meant. And I was like, well, if you like build yourself up a little more you could work your way up to twunk level so mm. now they spent the I entire mean, work week work your way up does sound like there's a hierarchy <laughs> <laughs> i must just stop well, like, you right there work your way up i guess in body weight okay is what i meant sure um and they uh you, you know every day they'll come out and they'll be like i did like a bunch of push-ups today am i twunky yet and i'm like uh <laughs> it takes a little longer than a, like a day or two to work on it i get I, like it, i so that was very fun and um right. it was nice it's nice to educate the children oh well, speaking of you educating know. the children i forgot a thing i did last week okay was i had that songwriting you class did, yes. for the eighth graders back in atlanta georgia and um one of my friends kathleen who i believe listens to the podcast hey kathleen uh set it up and because she works at the school and uh so i basically Talk to them about my journey as a songwriter, how I write my songs. They have basically after they take their exams, they all can take like a specialized class in this like different outside of like usual school walls kind of thing that they're interested in. And songwriting was a class that was offered to them. And I was like, I wish I was here now. Like that would be Mm -hmm. very cool to do. And so I talked to them about, um, you know, my career and like the whole I wish of it all and the big time rush of it all. And it was so funny because at a point the teacher was like, do you guys even know who big time rush is? Because again, they were born in like... 2009. Wow. Uh, and they were like, oh yeah, we really do. I was like, really? Wh- why? <laughs> but whatever. Um, They're like, ooh, like the old kids like that. Exactly. Yeah. My <laughs> older siblings liked them when they were little. Yeah. Um, but the best moment of the, which I talked about on the Discord, was there was this one girl who walked up to the Zoom uh, mic or whatever and was like, so, um, don't like I, my name is XYZ and like I write the orchestration sometimes for the morning announcements and like I love working with strings and quartets and like I just wanted to know from your perspective don't you think music peaked back when in like the classical and jazz era and everything since then has been horrible or, like it's, <laughs> music's gotten worse and you were like no ma'am music peaked in 1997 <laughs> and I've never danced around because I was like okay these are eighth graders do not curse like keep yourself <laughs> like professional and like something that the kids won't be like hey this I don't know, won't tell their parents something bad happened at school. And so I was like, well, you know, I feel like everyone always is partial to the music they grew up with. Like, I grew up on 90s R&B, and so that is always what I view as the best music that's ever been. And she's like, no, but I mean, like, before that, like, the classical era, like, don't you think that was the best? And I was like, you know, there's always something for everybody, and we're all, you know, the music we make is always standing on the shoulders of what came before us. Yeah, hey, that's true. That's true. That's true. I didn't have to say, I don't give a fuck (laughs) about any of that. I just like, you know, she's she's in eighth grade and she, I guess, is just like learning about music theory now and she's very yes. interested in it. And she, that's great. I guess, orchestrates the announcements, which that's kind very of cool. impressive. Like, eighth that's grade. very impressive. Honestly. I'm sure she's very talented. For but, sure. you know, I so I imagine in whatever uh, music theory classes she's taking, whatever, she's they're using like classical music and I guess sometimes like jazz music as um, learning things, like building totally. blocks to learn from totally. and everything. Uh, so that's probably what she's focused on right now. I just think it's very funny. 
something else. She's like, don't you think music peaked like at classical music and jazz music? And it's kind of like, those are like hundreds of right. years apart. You're but kind like, of, yeah. Yeah. Like classical era is like, you know. But again, what was I listening to in eighth grade? I'm pretty sure it was Jess Mariah getting into Britney, like in sync. So, you know, I think she is going to be a brilliant mind. And uh, as oh, our yeah. friend Adam Parnell pointed out in the Discord, he's like, I love that there are kids like that. I don't want people to no longer care about classical music because it's not like the trend on TikTok. So she's leading the charge. The thing is like, I'm not worried about stuff like that, especially yeah. now that we live in such a, a, a space, like a society where so much knowledge is at your fingertips. I mean, so much like disinformation is also at your fingertips, True. But, which is scary, but like there is so much information at your fingertips. You can go on, if you're bored one day and you're like, hey, I want to learn about jazz chords today. Right. You can just go on YouTube and like become a master at it. Hey. Like, it's crazy true. the things you can learn online so quickly. So uh, there will definitely be people who are able to discover older music. Yeah. And so I, I'm not worried about that sort of thing. I think there will definitely be kids out there who are interested in a lot of different things. All right. Yeah. I'm sure that's true. Are you ready to hype in, uh, hop into the news? Let's radio? hype in, guys. Let's hype that in. That should be like our new phrase. Like we're, we're hyping in, we're, folks. I don't know. That doesn't really sound like us. <laughs> Um, Aww. I know, I know, I hate that it's our first story, but John Mulaney has started his From Scratch tour. Oh, no, actually, he started in March, uh, and he just performed in Columbus, Ohio this past Friday, the 20th, and unbeknownst to the audience, Dave Chappelle was invited to perform a surprise set. According to various people in the audience, uh, Chappelle told transphobic and homophobic jokes, which made fans, including LGBTQ plus fans, very uncomfortable and upset. And then, of course, at the end of the show, John Mulaney comes out and hugs him. Um, and you know they get a round of applause sometimes people, I assume some, there are people that booed but it's also like the, it's he's He's not just like telling his jokes anymore he's he's doing this stuff just to create news and it feels like it's also like it's one thing to be like oh I'm I've bought a ticket it is 2022 if I buy a ticket to a Dave Chappelle show I know what I'm getting I know that I'm going to get something offensive transphobic homophobic whatever it is <laughs> because that's like but all he does that's his like, like new thing especially, yeah. but the fact that I just want to go see this you know used to be harmless white guy until he left his wife <laughs> uh, going just like doing his comedy and then Dave Chappelle pops up out of nowhere that's the worst part to me. It's like the thing that we would tell people is like, oh, just don't support Dave Chappelle. Don't go to his shows, blah, blah, blah. But if he's just popping up willy nilly like a freaking thief in the night. And you have to be like, hey, remember me? I caused controversy about eight months ago. Let me keep it going yeah, here it, in front it's of just you. Like, me... He's just trying to keep the controversy going, I which know. is just obnoxious and tired and so beneath him. And it's boring. Like, and it's like for someone so talented, why you're spending this portion of your career just attacking the people that are, you know, most disenfranchised in the world. It's like, what do you get out of this? Like, what is exciting for you yeah. besides like being a newsworthy item every week? Yeah. And I also like read accounts that were just like, people didn't even really laugh at of the Like they weren't they, even they're not jokes, jokes that people found funny and everything. And jokes. so it's like, you would think Dave Chappelle would realize like, oh, maybe when I keep bringing this up, people aren't laughing. Right. Therefore I need to get some new goddamn material. You'd think. Yeah. If only. But now it seems like he's just trying to prove a point and it's just like obnoxious. Um, and speaking of weird stuff that's happened, that's kind of anti-gay. Netflix has cut more than 150 jobs. There could be more layoffs. This is coming after their first quarter, like losing 200,000 subscribers or whatever. Mm. And, you know, of course there are layoffs and it's upsetting in all those ways. But if you notice, when I see the people who are like, oh, I was at Netflix and I was, you know, laid off. They're all the people from like the non-mainstream, like the strong black lead closed. And like the LGBT, I think most had a lot of layoffs, which is like the LGBT wing. It just seems like if you were hired to be, you know, to improve the diversity of Netflix, of the content brought in for this job, you're the first one on the chopping block. It's so interesting because you would think that that would be counterproductive. Right. You would think they'd be like, oh, how we want to reach different audiences now, right. like a more diverse audience. Like, so why are we getting rid of our like diversity? Hot, I like, guess they just want to hunker down and let, I don't know what the goal is, but it's just kind of shitty because I feel like all these people were offered so much money to leave whatever media job they were coming from mm -hmm. to go to Netflix because it's a giant conglomerate. It's a huge thing. And then just to be laid off so unceremoniously, there are people who are like, I found out in the press. Ooh, I didn't even hear it from awful. my boss. Like, it's just sad. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if part of it is because these like specific group, what are they called? Like, um, Well, there was one called Strong Black Lead and one okay. called Most. I think there was one called To Doom, I want to say, but don't quote me on that. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder if it's just because like they're newer, I guess, than other 
<sighs> groups that have like been there for longer. I, I don't guess. know. It's just like, it's just, is it not hard enough to be a working professional in a minority group and it, without you being the first one on the chopping block? Like if nothing else, doesn't it look bad for y'all to be firing all of the non-straight cis white people? Yeah, it is. I, I can't imagine they like didn't think about, oh, this will look bad. This looks bad. Notice, like all the people that we're firing. I don't get it. Um, so because nothing is ever going to go away, <laughs> I need to hear your take on the fact that the Oscars have announced, I don't know if they've announced, but it's come out that the Oscars 2023 is open to having Chris Rock host the broadcast, which means we're never going to not be talking about this. I mean, this event is li- can literally stand on stage and sing. I'm still here by Steven Sondheim. <laughs> like, Cause it will never ever and go didn't away. Didn't we put a moratorium on this discussion, but it's just it's the story that keeps going. But hey, the thing is, like, people will tune into those Oscars. This is, I mean, but do you want the Oscars to turn into a Housewives reunion? No, but if it means <laughs> that they will start airing all of the categories live, if they're like, hey, you know what? We got Chris Rock. That means we're our ratings are going to be really, really good because everyone's going to want to tune in to see what he says about this. Right. Maybe we can, like, throw all these branches a bone and like air them live again. Like I, maybe we can afford that and have Chris Rock keep popping back up. I hope that happens. I yes. hope that you get something good out of this yes. and that it's not just like, Oh, we're going to be rehashing and relitigating this this time next year. There's going to be a little bit of rehashing. From yes. Them, I'm sure. But, um, I mean, I'm going to watch regardless. <laughs> so. Did you hear that? A miss, Taylor folklore evermore swift. We're classmates. We're classmates. We're essentially the same. Yes. <laughs> we it's like looking in a mirror. So she received an honorary doctorate degree from our alma mater, NYU. Um, and uh here's a quote. There was a, apparently her speech was lovely. I've only seen a couple of quotes. Most of them are great. The one where she's like, I'm feeling 2022. I was like, boo. I was <laughs> every, like, yes, every, classic. Every, you know, I don't like that. But every other quote I've seen from this speech has been lovely. She says, quote, I know it can be really overwhelming figuring out who to be and when who you are now and how to act in order to get where you want to go I have some good news it's totally up to you I also have some terrifying news it's totally up to you Oh, that is that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, a shock. Taylor Swift's a good writer. I know, exactly. <laughs> um, I find it just devastating, though, that um, she has so much money and she gets an NYU degree for free. <laughs> I and know, I am right. just broke as hell and I'm still paying for my NYU degree. Uh, well, hopefully those student loans get canceled before you're done. That'd be amazing. <laughs> I mean, I'm done with mine, but I still hope they get canceled because I'm not an evil. Those people who are like, I paid my student loans. They shouldn't cancel That's them. That's just not a good It's argument. like, no, I want, I, I didn't like paying them. <laughs> if I could not, I would I'm want that. I'm having a great time. Yeah. I, you're just chilling, just I'm sending just the like, money yeah. to NYU. Hey. Um, yes. And then you, they call you and like, hey, can you donate some? And you're like, yes. Yeah. Half my salary goes straight to NYU. Straight to NYU, baby. I mean, we do love our BFAs, but. Yeah, you're, you haven't even, you're about to hang yours up. It's still it's right there. It is still right there. The I mean, I keep floor. meaning to, I mean, I keep meaning to hang it up. It's not happened yet, but it will. Um, Rihanna, who was a hot topic before we started the podcast with the YouTube folks, has announced that she is giving, has given birth to a baby boy. She is currently, she right is now, right giving birth. As she is you pushing. listen to this. Uh, no, it, she and ASAP Rocky welcomed their baby boy, I believe, May 13th. Mm. So she got a little Taurus boy, just like me. Just like you. Oh, my yes. God. Congratulations, Rihanna yes. and everyone involved. Do you think, because you, you know how Rihanna is able to make everything cool. Yes. Do you think her labor was just like the coolest labor? She was just like, yeah. I mean, hopefully. Uh, and you were just like, damn. I don't she's imagine. So cool. I don't imagine. She's so bad. <laughs> I don't imagine she was cool, but I'd like to think the ambiance she created. Like, I hope that there was mm. like, you know, so just good lighting and like, you know, be- beautiful smells. What are those like smell sticks called? I'm not cool. Incense? As you know. Incense. <laughs> <laughs> smell sticks? I'm not cool, as we all know. Uh, I hope there was incense around and I hope that like it was a calming environment. I'm sure she was going through it. Just like mm. from what I understand of childbirth, it's no walk in the park. But uh, she wasn't calm, cool, and collected. She was just cool. She was just—I mean, she yeah. still was cool. She's always cool, even when she's screaming. Yes. Um, so another piece of news that I found very interesting: uh, Bachelor alum Becca Tilly and Haley Kiyoko, uh, lesbian pop singer songwriter, have announced their relationship. 
Okay, this is interesting because Becca was obviously on The Bachelor. I, I don't was she on Colton season? She was basically going after you know, she was attempting to date a man. Oh, she was on Colton season. She might have oh, I know, right? Interesting. Can you believe? Huh. Everyone I, was gay there. I could be wrong. It, I don't remember which season she was on. In my head it was Colton's, but it could be we'll wrong. Say it was Colton. We'll it's, say, it, it, it's, it's a, more fun. It's, it's a it's fun Colton's. narrative. Um but I the most interesting thing I found about this. Okay. You're how long do you think they were secretly dating prior to this announcement? I don't know. How far did she get on The Bachelor? I'd say she was top four or something. She oh, a, so she was on for a while. She was on for okay. a while. She And she went to, I think she went to Bachelor in Paradise. She has a big social media following. But I don't think that has much to do with it. How long do you think they were secretly together? Uh, Give me a guess. I'm going to say uh, uh, six months. Multiply that. By eight, because they were secretly together for four Wait, years. When was Colton's season of The Bachelor? Not that we even confirmed <laughs> that it's Colton's season of The Bachelor. I know. I mean, I mean, it's been a minute. He's had several reality shows since. And he hadn't come, like he came out. I don't know. There was. It's been a, a minute. Four years? Four. And the thing is, just, uh, Haley wrote in the comments, like, it's been the best four years with you. And I was like, Four years? That's pretty wild. I mean, and Haley is open and clearly like she sings about girls in her songs. Yeah. Like she's very out. Um, and I'm like, could I have waited four years for, for someone, someone to like publicly be dating me? Especially when like, who's the girl? What's the other uh, girl? Becca Tilly. Be especially like Becca. It's like, sure, everyone comes out on their own time and everything. Of course. And I guess maybe she's like, I'm famous. Like, I don't want it to be like a whole PR. Like, yeah, maybe doesn't want it to affect her brand deals on Instagram. Yeah, but, sure. but it's kind of like, it's not like she's like, the president of the United <laughs> States, like something so impactful. That would like, take four years. Whereas like if this comes out, no. like this could have certain consequences sure. or something like that. It's like, you're going to tell on the batch. I mean, yeah, and <laughs> like, maybe she wanted to like, keep her options open on maybe returning to Bachelor in Paradise because, again, that's a nice little reality check. Okay. But for, I mean, for someone... Maybe they were, like, off and on for four years or, like, she open She said for it's been the happiest four years. Maybe they were friends for all of those years. Oh, no, darling. And, and then they, like, realized they loved each you, other. You so think Haley that, but then like, you watch the reel of, like, the four years together and the kisses and the, like, you and, know... And you're like, oh, this was pre-COVID. <laughs> this was pre-COVID. It just is... I just couldn't, when I saw the four years, that was the biggest shock. I'm happy for them. Happy for them. I want them to have a lovely, long relationship. Sure. And I believe Becca on her podcast said she's 95% sure that Haley's the one, which I think is nice. I mean, after and four years. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have, you're pretty sure. I hope you hope yeah. that very strongly. Um, but I just was shocked that it was four years. That right. was just wild to me. So hot. Hot. They're, they're Congrats both, to them. They're both hot. They're both so, gorgeous. Uh, All right. We're going through a lot of, because of course, uh, June is coming up. Gay Pride Month is coming up. And my up. birthday month. And your birthday month. Happy almost birthday. Uh, we're gonna, There's a lot of gay trailers to discuss is what I mean. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So you're gonna have to tell me if you've seen which gay trailer you've seen. Did you watch the Billy Eichner Bros trailer? Yes, cute. We all gasped at that pull, like pull away. Oh, that I was mean, a great pull away. So fucking. That funny. was funny. I'm excited about it. I, I was ner I was. I'm a little nervous. His voiceover was very Billy on the street. I was assuming <laughs> we were gonna like ground Billy a little bit, but I'm gonna see it. I'll be first in line. Oh, I, I am all about an abrasive gay leading man. No, abrasive I'm gay leading man for sure. That. But like, I support. You should s sound like a human. <laughs> like I don't know. No, you just <laughs> no, I don't want a human. Uh, please, don't as the human. Carol Channing stand, mm. if you sound like a human, I can't stand. You're not interested. So Billy, I hope you screech your way <laughs> through that shit. Okay. I'm excited about that. I feel like uh, well, hard stopper for all of you fans out there has been renewed for seasons two and three so that's very exciting mm -hmm. also love victor season three's trailer came out and for all those heart stopper fans it's like your show but with conflict and it's really <laughs> lovely i'm excited for the final season it looks really good there's also another uh film that i think is coming to uh amazon prime mm -hmm. um it's called fake my fake boyfriend yes. and it is Kenyon Lonsdale and Dylan Sprouse and Kenyon is also in Love Victor or he was Love in Simon he's in Love Simon but he was also in Love oh, Victor oh was he in Love Victor okay. he was maybe a guest star in season one so that's coming out and looks great and I love that Kenyon is you know really LGBTQ which mm -hmm. you know obviously Billy and everyone in Bros is but I don't oh, know if anyone in everyone in Bros every, is. every even the straight people which is my favorite thing my coworker um, was like why didn't you audition for Bros and I was like First of all, I can't just like audition for whatever the fuck I want. Right. And, everything. and it's like, and also every single cameo in bros yes. is a celebrity. Yeah. Like he got every that's single true. LGBTQ person possible. and was like, you get one line. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's 
That's so true. Ellen, one line. Is Ellen in it? <laughs> no, um, I don't think so. But hey, like, she could be. Yeah, it's you just like know. so many famous gay people. And there's also the trailer for Fire Island, which came oh, out yes. a couple weeks that ago. That looked good as well. That's going to be on streaming. It's going to be on Hulu. Um, I, I don't on Hulu. I think it's just so exciting. Like Bros, especially because Bros is going to be the first gay rom com ever. To play in theaters. I know. Like. I will be there opening night, masked on. It, I cannot wait. It's just going to be the most amazing thing to like see that in theaters. Right. And like, you know, I'm sure there are going to be a million people who have a million different opinions on it. Like, ooh, I like how the gays were portrayed. I didn't like how the gays were right. portrayed. Blah, 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 blah. And sure, you can have your feelings towards whatever. But absolutely. the fact that it is going to be on a big fucking screen and it's getting made a major studio is making this Huge. and putting on a big screen and I think the concept's like really funny like he has to write um, a romantic comedy that appeals to straight people yes. I love how that is a part of the plot it's great. so funny I, I'm just so excited for it I'm so excited for him I completely agree so all of this gay stuff's coming out so we will be have a busy June yes. coming up um, did you see that, unfortunately, the original Red Ranger got arrested for wire fraud? No, not Jason. <laughs> I know Jason, Austin St. John, arrested Wait for, for wire fraud. What's wire that? Fraud. Um, I think he was, uh, he had a scheme to defraud the government COVID relief system, specifically the paycheck system. It's alleged uh, he falsified <laughs> information to pocket relief money. Oh. He could face up to 20 years in prison if jailed. Jason. Jason, Jason, you were supposed to be the leader. I know, we trusted you. Yeah. And look at you now. Doing the same thing as like a real house husband. This doing, is like what Joe... Doing the, the same thing as what Rita Repulsa would do. <laughs> this is very Rita Repulsa. And we don't want that. No. Um, do you see this cast for Bong Joon-ho's next film? I'm very excited. I mean, anything with Tony Collette, we're excited. I mean, yes. Tony Collette, Mark Ruffalo, Naomi Aki. Is that her name? Uh, all going to be in Bong Joon-ho's next film. That's exciting. Lots of people are leaving SNL. Pete Davidson, uh, Kate McKinnon, A.D. Bryant, and some guy. This uh, is, pa- Kyle Mooney. <laughs> this is no shade at all to Pete Davidson. I know what you're going to say. We have all talked about, um, you know, I I think he seems like a very nice guy. Yeah. He's talented. He's funny and everything. I, I would let him be my sugar daddy. We had a whole podcast about it. I would um, <laughs> I thought he left SNL a <laughs> long time ago. Like That's I know funny. because I don't watch SNL yeah. regularly. Like I'll like watch skits when they pop up and I'll be like, Oh, I'll watch this one and everything. And sometimes he's like on it. Mm. And so I always figured he was like, whenever he was on a skit, he was like a guest. Like, you know how my Rudolph like pops in. She's like, right. Hey, I was in the neighborhood. No, he was still um, in the cast. I had no idea he was still in the regular game. <laughs> so <laughs> when it was announced that he was leaving, I was like, Oh, I had no idea. So I thought he was just like living his life and dating Kim Kardashian. I also think it's odd that all of the stories are putting him as the like top build person that's leaving. And it's like Kate McKinnon is the Emmy done, winner. She won an Emmy. She She's done Emmys. so much for that show. Like, let's put some respect on her name, please. Like, know, even though yeah. she's not dating Kim Kardashian, that's not her fault. Yeah. I feel like we should be giving Kate and 80 more 80 results. And the guy, Kyle Mooney. I'm sorry. I keep referring to him as the guy. Kyle Mooney, I'm sure is nice and lovely. And I want good things for all of them. Um, In other good news, uh, the bird watcher who was wrongly accused of the Central Park video. Remember that all happening? Oh, my God. Yeah. He got a bird watching TV show. Did he He really? He did. He is going to be uh, hosting a show called Extraordinary Birder. And it is coming to... uh, I don't know what this is. National Geographic TV. I think it's plus. I think it's streaming. Um, All right. Tweet, tweet, motherfucker. Exactly. Let's go. Let's tune in. Wait, I'm looking at his picture. It looks like he has arms. Wait, no. That w- and the thing is, you couldn't really say it at the time because there was so much more around that video. But of I'm like, course. Are we not going to talk about how hot this like, man is? I'm, <laughs> the, I'm like just now discovering how hot he is. Hello? That, uh, like... I'm suddenly, I'm suddenly obsessed with birds. He's traveling all the over the world to watch birds, whether braving stormy seas in Alaska for puffins, trekking into rainforests in Puerto Rico for parrots, or scaling a bridge in Manhattan for a peregrine falcon. Uh, uh, peregrine falcons in Manhattan? What? <laughs> he does whatever it takes to learn about these extraordinary feathered creatures and show us the remarkable world in the sky above. I think I'm in love with him I now. Mean, well, like, you, I mean, well, I mean, he has a great hobby and is now making a great living yes, doing it. And he has great arms. And he has great arms. Well, he's, and he's a stone's throw if he's in New York from Jersey. So you could just go home. So I just have to move to Jersey. Guys, I'm moving back to Jersey. Well, that'll mess up um, our podcast. <laughs> I'm moving back to Jersey <laughs> to find uh, the Central Park dog walker and um, marry him. Okay. I look forward and to we'll that. And we'll date for four years in secret. Yes. I and think that's good. No, I think we'll he's out. out. Oh, is he? Wait, he's gay? He's gay. I didn't know. <laughs> 
yeah. He's got- I didn't know this. Girl, how put, do we my, get- put my number in the info section. I know. Oh my God, I hope he watches this and is like, oh, that redhead's so cute. Like, he, he could be watching to this LA. right now. <laughs> we can check out birds in LA. There's birds. We have birds. Well, we have to go from good news for you to bad news for you. Wait. John Gosselin's releasing music and I blame you. <laughs> You are the person who supported these people. He's released a new hip hop song called Voicemail. Oh, it's hip hop. It's hip hop. It's in it's a collaboration with his musical pos- partner DJ Casper and there will be more following. You know, there was an interview he gave <laughs> recently where he spoke negatively of my queen Kate and I was like, what's he doing? Why is he suddenly doing press? This is cuz he has music to promote. And he was very likable in this interview, too. Really? I, I, and, and he spoke like, poorly of Kate? He, it seems like... He, he didn't speak, like, directly poorly of Kate. He was yeah. very much just like, well, I'm, you know, trying to... It was very much insinuating, like, I'm the one that, like, is trying to, like, keep the family together even though we're no longer together and she's just not helping mm. and everything. Like, so it, it wasn't, like, a direct, like, oh, she's this. But mm. I could sense what he, tone was happening and I was tone. like, John... Um, I can't believe he's promoting this music. I, it's really shocking to I, me. Y- you know, I'm going to give it a listen. <gasps> <laughs> I mean, this is some Popo's Zow shit. Just this be- is Kevin Federline. Just because now I'm curious. But it's also been so long since anyone's been talking about John or Kate. I know. But the thing is, like, he should not be putting out new music. It should, we should be doing something in celebration of the kids turning 18. Are the, the older kids or the, the younger kids? What? Yeah. How old are we? <laughs> We're a million. We're fossils. Yes, I Throw know. Throw us in the ground. I watched them grow up. I watched Alexis poop all over her crib. And now she's a grown woman able to vote. I did not watch that. <laughs> um, lastly, I just want to say uh, MTV is uh, rebooting The Hills and Jersey Shore. They're still, Jersey Shore original is still on. I think they're doing Jersey Shore Family Vacation. But the cast of Jersey Shore is pissed. And they Why all they pissed? had a group uh, Instagram message that says the following. A group Instagram They message? all posted it on their Instagrams okay. as a cash that took a chance with a network in need. We'll come back to that. <laughs> we put our most vulnerable moments on television for the world to see. We gave our all over the past 13 years and became a family and continue to open our lives to the world. So please understand that we are not in support of a version that will exploit our original show, our hard work, and authenticity to gain viewers. Oh, so it's not a reboot with them. No, but their show is still on they have a jersey shore family reunion they film for like two weeks a year which is i think what they want but there's a reboot with younger people and the hills is going to be rebooted with younger people and it's like okay i hear you and i understand this can be hard to be on a reality tv cast like like none it hasn't changed in 13 years Mm -hmm. is something like we were just talking about real world uh on paramount plus they were cycled in and out they made five thousand dollars those seasons Mm -hmm. guys you did fine you oh, have you become beyond. millionaires on yes. this show. Let them reboot it. It probably won't do as well as your uh, show has no, done and will do. It. And it's just like, let it, let it come out. It will die. And you will continue to make money and be influencers. That just feels so ridiculous. And the thing is, like, if people watch this new version, then they'll also, like, be do like, their research and be like, oh, yeah, what's up with Snooki in the game? version and, and be like, oh, what is this? Because I'm too young to have watched it back right. then. So let me watch the original. Oh, my God. The original is so good. It's like, you know, what the you know, the eighth grader who discovers classical music. It's through crazy. listening to modern music and she's like let me see what this classical music's about and then they develop a passion <laughs> I know you will be like a 12 year old's passion again Snooki. that's true and yes someone's like didn't they try to do a new hills and that's like yes but they did it with the old cast and no one watched that and so that's why they're rebooting that show mm-hmm. with new people because it's like without Lauren Conrad or Kristen Cavallari there's no hills. And also, naturally, this new version is no, not going to become course, anywhere near as but, Like These are not going to be new kids who are going to become millionaires off of this I now, will say like I am did. happy that they're trying at least with some content that's not just ridiculousness or whatever the fuck they play on MTV all the time. I would like them to get, now that hopefully Real World Homecoming is opening their eyes, that like, oh, people still care about this kind of show. Mm-hmm. Hopefully we get a little bit more of that and fewer prank shows from them. You know? Yes. That's what I would like. Yes. Um, so wait, is there any other news for idiots we should talk about before we take our oh, break? Do you want to talk about what the sad story? You tell us. You talk about it. The, the what? The Wendy. You talk about it. Oh, I don't. I don't know that. Have the articles. Okay. Well, the, <laughs> I, I don't. You said you were uh, thinking of talking about. It. We don't have to. Um, I mean, the only thing that we can really say is I believe Wendy Williams has been put into a guardianship for the next couple of months um, because Wells Fargo 
said that she was not of sound mind. Uh, let me find the article. But it's just um, Wendy Williams has been placed under a financial guardianship until July after Wells Fargo claimed the star is an incapacitated person. Williams' attorney uh, says she is of sound mind and health and that the temporary guardianship isn't necessary. I I mean, I guess there's nothing we can possibly say because we don't know what's going on. Like, what could possibly be going it's on? It's just, but it's also like, this only happens to women. I mean, yeah. This only happens to famous, rich women with a lot of power. And I'm glad Amanda Bynes is out of her conservatorship. I'm glad, of course, Britney is out. Hopefully this windy thing does not get extended beyond July. But it's like... I mean, I mean, again, I don't want to dive into this, but like from what we hear about Johnny Depp from this trial, like this is a person that according to, you know, I just was talking to Corey. He was like he bought his house and the five houses by him because he's so paranoid. He owns like the whole top of an apartment building. And it's like, are these good uses of funds? This person has an addiction problem and is pointedly paranoid. Like, was there never talk of a guardianship or conservatorship for him? I just, that's a point. It just (laughs) feels so anti-woman, this whole thing and this whole, I don't know. It just grosses me out. I hope she's okay. Yeah, I hope she's okay. She's heard, she's done a phone interview and seemed very coherent. I remember hearing the phone interview and being like, she sounds sounds like herself. Yeah. So it's just weird and sad. And um, I don't know. I guess that's all, unless you have any other news. I don't think so. No. Okay. Well, let's take a quick break uh, and then we'll be back with more Two Game Ads, the podcast. All right. We're back. We're good. We're good. We're here. We're feeling good. And we are on to email my heart. This is the section of the podcast where we answer any questions that you guys might have. You can be a part of email my heart if you email us at twogaymats at gmail.com. Two is spelled T-W-O. And so we got a lot of emails this week, actually. Thank you. And so we are going to answer two and leave some others for the back burner. Um, This question we actually like just got, but I feel like it relates to our uh, dear eighth grader friend Mm -hmm. um, who says... Uh, it's from our friend Mel. And Mel Hi, says, Mel. "Boomer music." Hi, Mats. It's finally starting to warm up and feel like summer and feel like summer on the East Coast. And for me, that means breaking out my summer music. My dad was a huge fan of '60s slash '70s music, so for me, summertime means the Beach Boys, the Rolling Stones, and of course, Bruce Springsteen. Yes, New Jersey. <laughs> I'm curious. Um, you have music that is specific to summer or other seasons. Also, do you have? Um, Boomer music faves or music you grew up listening to that was influenced by your family. Uh, as always, thank you for continuing to deliver light and love through all your content. Your podcast is literally the best part of my week. Oh, that's so nice. Mel is great. Um, I weirdly enough, my parents, when we would drive around and like listen to music, they were interested in what was on the radio currently. Like I really? feel like a lot of families listen to old school music and like I knew conceptually that my mom liked Prince and liked Stevie Wonder, but like we were listening to like SWV on the radio and like whatever V103 was playing back in Atlanta. Well, I imagine the- you were just like, "Mom, turn this channel on." No, and she was not looking for oldies, I felt okay, like. She Mrs. just like Palmer. in general at that time was not I don't know. She was like up with that. Like she was listening to Arrested Development. A lot of Desiree, You Gotta Be was big for her. Okay. Vanessa Williams, Save the Best for Last. So songs like that, songs that we would listen to on the way to Natchez, Mississippi to visit my grandma. Uh, that kind of always reminds me of my, my mom. Mama sure. Palmer's hip. But She's she does. With it. But she loves Prince, loved Prince. And uh, Stevie Wonder as well was up there. I remember she told a story about like being in college and singing Hey Jude. So that's like the one Beatles memory I had before I went to high school. And everyone okay. was like, the Beatles is the best music of all time time and i'm like what You're like what did, were they around in 1997 those, those uh, people that mariah is about to beat on the, the charts for all time like that's all i know about them sorry yeah what about like boomer specific music like are there any people like of that era no okay <laughs> like we that would you, sing like Joni Mitchell uh, in chorus sometimes. We would sing mm-hmm. Beatles stuff in chorus sometimes. Uh, and I think we sang a Billy Joel song or something. But I've only heard the choral versions of those songs generally. Okay. And like hear the real ones. I'm like, and usually I was like singing them. I mean. My I, beautiful I, alto voice. You know that I, I did have the In My Life solo from the Beatles. Oh, man. And it was Charm Bracelet Era. So I whispered every note. Yes. <laughs> It's like someone better have a mic because you will not be able to hear me. If only John Lennon whispered, imagine, you know. <laughs> there are places I re- 
Miller. Yes, <laughs> guys. Very light. I have chills. What were you listening to? Um, I, Well, my family, my mom didn't like really turn on music uh, when we were younger. Mm. Um, music was very much something that my grandparents would turn on and it was always show tunes. It was always like my, you know, both of my grandfathers, you know, they were veterans. So they were always listening to South Pacific, the music man, guys mm. and dolls. I remember it was my like pop up, one of my pop ups favorite and everything. And so it was always like show tunes that we, and we would always like turn on the record player and like dance around my grandparents Aww. basement to you know these old records of um, musical theater so that's I mean that's why I I always grew up listening to musical theater to me that is that is the best music of all time right um, and because you know it's it's just what I grew up with it's what I know like intrinsically in my bones I didn't realize um, that I, oh, I yeah. felt like when I imagined you as a kid, I imagined your mom playing the Immaculate Collection. See, that is the only thing that my mom, like, if she wanted to, like, turn on music, that she would turn on. Because oh. that was, like, the one, like, album that she had. <laughs> like, wow. And so we, that, when it comes to, like, popular music, um, she would always have on the Immaculate Collection. Yes. Like, that cassette and I mean, everything. a classic. It's absolutely a classic. Um, so, yeah, that's what I grew up with. So, I, I can't say I grew up... So neither of us are those boys no, who grew sorry. up. Like, my dad really loves the Eagles. Is that was that? A thing? <laughs> I think they're a band. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, those yeah. kind of bands and everything that I like the dads that. are always into. For sure. What about like seasons? Because Mel asked uh, about. I mean, I do have a "Let's Go to the Beach" each playlist, which. <laughs> obviously features uh, Starships. It features Summer Boy by Lady Gaga, which I think we were just talking about some week, which I think is such an excellent summer song. Uh, I think it also features fantasy, just like really up-tempo, like happy moments like that. And then I have for fall, all too well, 10 minute version. Okay. (laughs) And I feel like those are the two seasons that I have music for. And fall is just the one song. But it's 10 minutes, I, so I it's that. fine. It, it fits, yeah. It and does. then, of course, there's Christmas. Oh, well, which, Christmas. Which starts for you October 1st. Absolutely, it does. <laughs> and you think he's kidding, but he has lived with me and, like, heard. I remember very early on, I would say it was, like, June or July, the first, like, couple of months I was dating Jackson. And I said, and for some reason, in talking, in all seriousness, I was like, well, you know, Christmas is coming up, blah, blah, blah. And, like, Jackson is eternally kind, like, especially up until this point. It was early in our relationship. He just looked at me and he said, no, it's not. <laughs> I was like, it is. It's we're on our way to Christmas. Fuck yes. yeah, Jackson. Fuck yeah. <laughs> no, it's not so rude. Christmas Bennett. is always coming up. I guess it's always come up, coming up forever yeah. until we all die. It is, like, and it's good to have things like that to look forward to. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's, that's a nice way of putting it. <laughs> um, I just love when it's like, you know, fall and warm, and I just hear like jingle jangle in Matt Palmer's bedroom. <laughs> I'm going to miss that. I'm not going to have that this I October. Know. You got to tell Travis that he's got to play some Christmas Travis is early. Jewish. Oh, well. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> um, okay, so next question comes to us from Michael. Michael says, email my heart. Dear Matt, Matt, and Couch. <laughs> Uh, I'll, since we're not with the couch right now, we'll I'll pass along I'll the pass message. Along the message. Yes. Um, I'm a child of my mid thirties and I could really use some advice. I would consider myself a wanderer of sorts because I've moved around a lot in my life. Every city I've lived in, I collected a group of queer friends and became very close with them. But as I moved to the next city, I've learned that most people aren't open to a long distance friendship. Mm. I put effort towards trying to keep up and be a part of their lives, but eventually the conversations go stale and I'm left with memories and a pile of of red receipts. Hmm. I don't have family myself, so this always leaves me feeling very lonely until I meet my next group of amazing friends. Four years ago, I finally settled into a city I love and can imagine myself living here for a long time. In the past year, I noticed that coincidentally, all my friends were straight and being Hmm. around them wasn't bringing me the same feeling of joy, so I ditched them and have been much happier. But sure enough, the empty feeling that can only be filled with dolls and divas is creeping in. I'm really nervous about making new friends because I feel like I'm still mourning my relationships from the past, but I can't help but feel lonely. Is this madness something you can relate to or have advice on because I could really use help? I adore both of you and thank you for the incredible content. Wow, Wow. this is a deep... I love this question. I know, Michael. I think that you are in a good position because you know that you have the ability as an adult just out in the world to make new friends in new places. You've done it so many times before and it's a struggle for a lot of people even you know me I feel like there's you're at work so often you're with the people you know so often like expanding your social circle is not the easiest thing to do as an adult when you're in high school and stuff you're just all in the same classes things get mixed up you're around different people all the time. When you're in your like early 20s or something like you make a friend and there's 
just like always like something going on, like a party or like exactly. an event, like people, but like when you get to your thirties, it's just like, I mean, not that we would know, <laughs> uh, but we assume like, you know, you're, it's like, I'm going to bed. I know. <laughs> like, and like a lot of people, not, you know, maybe not your queer friends you find, but maybe with your straight friends, a lot of people are getting married and partnering up and like yes. having babies. And you know, while we love that for them and want to be around babies when you can, that's not the same as having like a one-on-one friendship with uh, a, a fellow queer person. So I think you are right and allowed to mourn those long distance friendships and like try not to be too hard on those people. Cause I also feel like I fall into the category of like not being a great long distance friend, like mm. outside of Janie who was in New York for years before she moved out here. I probably have like fallen a little out of touch with people from along, you know, that don't live close by, but it's never, there's no anger or animosity or like any, I hope on my end, at least there's not, it's never like, uh, Oh, I feel like, if we got together, there'd be an elephant in the room. It's like, no, we just don't live together. Mm-hmm. We're not in the same place. But if we came back together, we'd be just as close as we ever were. So yeah. um, I think the fact that you have the ability to form new friendships is a great sign and not something that everyone has. So you should really count yourself lucky. And when you feel ready and healed enough from those, you know, hurt feelings about those former friendships that you want to go out and make new friends, you always can. You have that ability and that's really a beautiful thing. Well, and here's the thing with like, and just reading the email and everything and just, and just knowing that like Michael has the confidence of just like, able to go from city to city and like also is now in a city that he really likes and everything. Yeah, like great. you have the, you are clearly a con, you know yourself well. And so I feel like naturally I, I don't feel like you have to worry because I feel like w- if you're someone who knows yourself well and has the confidence to like make these giant moves and everything, right. like I feel like it will fall into a, you know, place and everything. I, I, I really, I feel like you're in a good spot yes, and everything. Absolutely. So, um, but yeah, I get it. It is very hard, you know, friends who you develop later in life and become close with and then move away from, it's harder to keep in touch with them more yeah. so than like, I'm still best friends with all of my like really good, not all of them, but like my close friends from elementary school and yeah. like that moved on to like middle school and high school and everything. But that's because we had decades together and mm. we grew up together. And so I still talk to them almost every day mm. uh, in like our group text thread and everything. Um, but it is harder. Like the friends that you made at like 26 and then you, we're close for a couple years and then right. we moved away and everything. Um, yeah, I I think you're in a good spot. I, I think, think, I think so you're too. in a better spot than you gave yourself credit for. I agree. Michael. Yeah. Um, and you sound amazing. So. I know. And it's great you found a city that you love. And Honestly. It sounds like you're if you're, you're able to stay there, yes. you're working and You're doing better than a lot of people. Yeah. So. Team you are, Michael. You are doing great, Team Michael. So Matt Steele. Yes. I have a question for you. Oh God. What? Has been giving you moments, darling. Okay, so you're all. This is gonna be a horrible giving me moments. <laughs> so I'm gonna like make it kind of brief. Okay. Um, because it's like an actory thing, which mm. is just like, oh, like, and you can't me. really talk about it. Well, it's it's more so like who wants to hear Matt Steele be like, oh, being an actor's hard sometimes. No, I would listen to that. Oh God, it's annoying. You don't oh want to hear God. that drivel. <laughs> um, but so I, you know, th- there are times you know, being an actor and everything, you are in positions or you find yourself in, in like ruts where you're just like, am I doing anything correctly? Mm. Like, is anything working out? I feel absolutely useless and like nothing is going my way. And there's a point in time this year where I'm just like, I feel like absolutely nothing is happening. Mm. Like, am I doing it all wrong? And this week I got the best audition I think I could ever possibly get want oh my god um like maybe not in terms of like i i won't go into any details <laughs> um but like it is as big as you could possibly get when is the audition of, well i have to submit it by wednesday okay so of course i spent the past several days there are several separate up components to this self-tape audition um so i'm like filming like a million million takes of all different I things mean, so course. i'm doing it like every single day i've been doing this yes um, and I'm going to pick like the best ones and everything. Um, I can't, I'm not going to say what it is, um, but uh, these are things that are, it, they make me feel excited and make me feel like, you know what? Something good. I am getting, and in no way in a million years am I ever going to book this. Um, but I'm just like, you, you know, know I, I, I know, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I know there's no way in a million years that, Whatever. Okay. Um, but still like knowing that the opportunity is there right. 
and that I am being considered. Because I always say, whenever I tell people about acting, they're like, oh, give me some advice. I'm always just like, the hard thing isn't booking the job, it's mm. getting the auditions. And that's very much been the case like for me, I feel. And so this makes me feel like, you know what? You are doing something right. Opportunities are oh, there. I'm so, so just, excited this, for you. It just made me feel good. Of course. Yes. And so, and I mean, I know it's not the same thing, but not to just make this end of the podcast cheesy and uplifting. Uh, you always have the two gay mats people. I do. Like you have us. <laughs> we are very team Matt Steele. We only want good things for you. And I'm so excited to hear. About yeah, yeah, it. blah. Um, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting. And congratulations. Thank you very much. Because, like you said, like you tell any young actor, this is the hard part. It, it's the that it's the hard part. Just getting the audition is the hard part. And so just the fact that I got this audition and I know someone who knows someone who is very closely connected to wow. this project. Checks. Yes. And uh, so I, she like asked him about what was going on and everything. And he was like, oh, wow, your friend got an audition for that. Like, wow. they're not just giving those away like they're candy. Did it like, come through your management? Through or my did- manager. Okay. Um, and it, it's I, I feel very it's just it's just wonderful having yes. those, like, when there are mom- when there are moments that suck there are like little moments that of like light that are just wonderful oh and this God. was was that and so i'm filming a million takes of just the same 30 second snippets over and over again uh and being like awful <laughs> Take 700. That's literally what I sound like when I record a song. Whenever I'm recording and Jackson's out there, he's like, you're so mean to yourself. Because I'll be like, ah. And I'm like, awful. Awful. No. <laughs> I just know it's wrong. Because you're listening to every single yes. solitary and, millisecond right. of a note. And you can hear it all in your ear. It's like when you watch it back, you're just like, awful. I'm looking at every twitch of my eye. Like, we can't I, have that. I'm just like, mm. and the thing that sucks is when you have like one take where you're like, I like this moment of this take, but this moment of this take, and I can't just like edit them <laughs> I was going to say, is that allowed? No. No. You can't I mean, edit. I mean, you could, but it, people would be, be like, what's the fuck is this? Um, <laughs> see, you're so you know privileged. You I can know. just edit all that stuff. I can. I can edit and then I can tune it. I, I mean, can do it I, all, you can tune bitch. It. I mean, you can charm bracelet the fuck out of I that. Know. You can make that through the rain and be like, <laughs> one line of this and one line of this take and one I line mean, of this take. if you think through the rain had a full line in it. <laughs> <laughs> Not in that last course, darling. But hey, final product is fucking It is amazing. So, it is amazing. Um, so yeah, Matt Palmer, what's been giving you moments? I mean, I feel like mine is going to be a little all over the place um, because not things but like I haven't like consumed one piece of content that yeah. really I gave mean last me week you had many moments I had many moments some of them are the same Zelda Ocarina of Time <laughs> mm-hmm. I have gotten to the point where I've grown up I've gotten the three like initial stones I think you're supposed to get like a fire stone you grow the... up in Zelda? yeah you start as it's a like kid a, it's like a Tamagotchi it's well no it's like you start <laughs> as a kid and then uh, there's a moment where you play the song of time with mm-hmm. your Ocarina mm-hmm. and then you basically are asleep for seven years and you don't know uh. but when you <laughs> But when you wake up, you're like fully grown Link. And so like, that's where I am. And I'd be so, pissed. No, why is that why you pissed? If you woke up and missed seven years of your no, life. No, but this is like a part of the game. And then okay. Ganon has taken over the world. And so I have to stop him. Okay. You know? And so that has been lovely. I think also in general, having the week to live by myself. And like, while it was like, you know, I had moments of spiraling near the beginning. It's nice to be because I never in life have lived alone. Like I have never had an apartment alone. Mm. I, you know, grew up and then always had roommates through college, had roommates afterwards. And sometimes I think like, oh, did I miss a step in development? Like, would I be able to live in my own brain for so long? And like, I really found a routine that is nice and feels like me and doesn't feel sad and like doesn't feel like too much of one thing. Like I'd be playing my Zelda and then I'd be like reading some of Molly Shannon's book and then I'd be catching up on Real World New Orleans on Paramount and then I'd be working on music. It just felt like I discovered a good balance just by myself and Mm -hmm. I feel like that is I don't know something that I I don't want to be a codependent person in a relationship and so this week has reminded me that I'm not and I knew I wasn't but you just have that worry in the back of your mind like Mm -hmm. I just I don't want people to think of me as like one half of a couple even though like look at us (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> but I, I, you know, you want to be able to be at peace with yourself. And I very much was as the week went on. And so I thought that was lovely. It was, look at this self-loving era know, of two gay masks. Look at podcast. us. We just started screaming about Beyonce and, you know, musical theater. And now we're all about self-care and self-love. And this podcast specifically, it's I know. just like, ah, uh, Michael, me, you. Yes. All we're all doing our. The couch. Yes. The couch is really doing the best of all of us, <laughs> honestly. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to think if there's any other specific things I want to talk about, but it just was in a general niceness and, you know, I folk, you know, I, I work out a lot and so I'm like, okay, I'm going to work out as much as I'm going to work on my music and sing and like trying to just create a good balance in life, you know, uh, and work on two game ad stuff as much as I can. I don't know. It just feels like I feel recentered. Mm. The week, you know, and we love that. Oh, we have such similar giving me moments. I know. <laughs> Look at us. We're on the same wavelength, even though yeah. we're across the city. Our lives are just beginning. Guys. Yeah, they really are. That's the thing. That is the no thing. matter how old you are, your life is always just beginning. That's not as, true. As, <laughs> as Stephen Schwartz mm. said in his best score, Children of Eden. Okay. For every moment of our lives mm. is the beginning. Okay. Ah. Uh, Iconic score. We have to. So, so a patron. If there's a patron out there, <laughs> please like request that because Matt Palmer needs to listen to it. All right. Well, is that all that we have to say today? I guess. Anything else we need to tell the people? Okay. Well, guys, this has been so much fun. It's been so lovely chatting with all of you on YouTube, and I hope you've enjoyed the podcast. And we'll be ba- we'll be back next week with more Two Game Mats, the podcast. Bye. Bye. Bye.